Hey, Ronnie. Hey, Luke. You know what we might could do? <laughs> no, what, what, what could we might do? <laughs> no, might could do. Uh, we could go into our mailbox. Uh, oh. It's been a while since we've done that. We have not done that in a while. Have you seen how many emails are in? There was 390 emails. Yep. From the last month, I responded to one. One, thanks, yes. Ron. You're really a giver. <laughs> I like to contribute. Yeah, I know you do. All right, so next up, we'll dive into our inbox. Hello there. Hello there. And welcome to another episode of Man Are So Smart. I am Lou Gallagher. I and I am Corvette Ronnie. It's nice to have you here. If you're new to our show, be sure and subscribe to our channel. You can do that below. When you do, click on that bell. That'll give you notifications each time a new show comes out. We wouldn't want you to miss them. Um, so today, it's our inbox episode, Dear Ronnie and Lou. Okay, I'm love, with you so far. I, I know you would. Uh, love your show. Never miss the new episodes. Thank you. Why? Because of the bell. <laughs> I'm a divorced man, and I was out for dinner with a nice lady the other night. A hooker. Okay. <laughs> wow, that's presumptuous. <laughs> Perhaps true, but still presumptuous. <laughs> when the check came, mm -hmm. I paid for it with cash. Oh. It was a little over $100. All right. This woman was astonished astonished that I carried cash. In fact, she asked me how much I carry at one time. She's planning to hit him over the head and take his wallet. <laughs> you know what, when you leave the restaurant, take separate cars, okay? Yeah. Can you guys tell me, what is the appropriate amount of cash a man should carry at all times? Well, here's my take right off the bat. There's two kinds of money carrying. Yeah. There's, you know, you're going to be going someplace and you want to be able to make sure you have cash. You don't want your debit card to be uh, denied or whatever. Right. So I would say probably most days a hundred bucks. I think I have... I don't know. I think I have 80 or 100 in my wallet right now. Now, there's two kinds of money carry, and the other kind is when you're going on a date. Yes. And I almost hate to subcategorize it, but a first date maybe. I would say that $200, $250, I think that, and, and maybe a credit card, uh, I think that you'd be able to take care of just about any expense that someone might have. See, I don't, uh, I don't spend, I've had probably had the same 80 or hundred dollars in my wallet for the last two months. Well, I noticed that, um, when you took your wallet out the other day, a moth flew out of there. Yes. I, I don't, uh, I don't spend a lot of my cash. Biggest reason is I have a credit card that I get cash back on if I use it. Oh, so I get 5% back on gas. 3% back on dining and 1% on everything else. And so uh, my my bill may be $1700 a month. In fact, last month it was 1742. But um uh, you know, I just got $17.42 back. Wow. So yeah, I that's kind of how I roll. Now, I haven't dated in quite a long time. As far well, as we wife, haven't dated. As far as my wife knows. Yeah. <laughs> uh, your secret's safe with me. <laughs> so, but I do understand how maybe flashing a little cash might set the right kind of tone. You just, you don't know, but you do want to make a good impression. Right. If you're interested in the girl. Yeah. Um, you don't want to pull out a check from your mom and say, yeah. Let me, I just got to cash this check from my mom real quick. Right. we got to run by her bank. <laughs> yeah. It's in Nevada. <laughs> yeah. No, you know, and see, that's a, there's a there's a real gray area there too, Ronnie, with dating and flashing cash. Two bad things can happen. One, um, you look like a douche yep. uh, for trying to show off. And two, um, you know, a first date is not the date to take someone out for lobster and mm -hmm. caviar and champagne. No. Not on the first date. No. 
maybe the fifth or sixth day. Unless it's Jennifer Aniston. Well, then all bets are off, right? Yeah. And that's a given. <laughs> all right, so i tell you what. We found this article. This is exactly how much cash you should carry at all times. And it goes to say, some of you may not be old enough to remember, but there was a time not that long ago when leaving the house without at least a little cash in your wallet or purse was unthinkable. You never knew when you might need to spend money, whether it was paying a restaurant bill, as we mentioned, or filling up someone's gas tank or your own, or picking up some groceries before heading home or over to a date's house for dinner. Life was just a series of cash exchanges waiting to happen. But paper yeah. currency has become increasingly rare in our daily transactions. Credit and debit cards are accepted just about everywhere, and minimum purchase requirements are becoming things of the past. Uh, you can pay for taxis with an app, split a restaurant check with a friend, uh, pay for just about anything else with PayPal. If you have cash on you at all, it rarely ever gets touched. Yeah, but until that one time when you need it, believe it or not, there are still moments in life when you'll need cold hard cash. And when that happens, and it always does, you'll need to consider things you haven't thought about in years like, do I have enough? That's not usually something that goes through a person's head when they're paying with their credit card. If something costs $20, then your card just magically pulls that amount out of either, uh, out of the air. But if you're paying in cash, then you need to have exactly $20 on you. Uh, so how much should you really carry? All right, nuts and bolts. What's a reasonable amount to carry on you just in case of an emergency? And by emergency, we mean finding yourself in a situation where either the electronic transfer of funds is impossible or it's a situation where slipping a few bills into someone's hand is your only option. Uh, tipping a service person, for instance, or donating to a lemonade stand being run by a neighborhood kids down the block. Uh, nobody should be the guy who tries to buy sidewalk lemonade by asking, do you take American Express? Are you a douche? <laughs> yes or no? Please check the box. <clears throat> the problem with cash is <clears throat> it's such a nebulous subject. <clears throat> Excuse me. With credit, things are more cut and dried. We can tell you what a good credit score is, but the sensible amount of cash to carry with you during an average day, how much? Well, that involves a lot of guesswork and contemplating that many what-ifs you may encounter out there in the world, saying that essentially the situations change. So there's really, there's lots of opinions on how much you should carry. A uh, survey recently from Money Magazine found that 42% of the people carry no more than $40 in cash, 30% carry between $41 and $99, and 17% carry 100 to 199 while just 11% carry $200 or more. And they really didn't give any explanations as to why those denominations were picked. So you fall into the... I'm, I'm right at that 17% uh, range. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, fair enough. So we decided to find out, according to this article, uh, scouring the internet for collective wisdom, checking everything from expert uh, financiers to opinionated Reddit users to see and find a consensus. Everybody has an argument, and believe it or not, there are actually some common grounds. By popular opinion, based on dozens, if not hundreds of people who still believe in the power of paper money, the official tally of how much cash you should carry with you at any time is, Ronnie? $200. Okay, two hundred dollars, and yep. I think that you know that carries all covers all situations. If you ask me, so for my son, that would be his entire life savings. Right. He'd have to carry that on him at all times. His entire life savings. If you gave him twenty bucks to get to the even two hundred, right? <laughs> right. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> uh, so why two hundred? Because it's enough to handle a standard emergency, but not a cataclysmic one. It's not going to save you if you need to leave town and set up a new identity to escape the mob. God dang it! Unfortunately. I, Ronnie, why do you always have to bring the law I have, stuff? I know this from experience. Uh, but let's say you're at a restaurant and you try paying your bill with a credit card. It gets declined. Bingo. Rut row. Uh, you don't understand. There must be some mistake. Your server tries it again. Still nothing. No. Oh, that's embarrassing. It really is. Uh, so you can call on the credit card company and try to get to the bottom line. But who knows how long that could take. And if it's in the evening, 
You're never. You're not going to get through to anybody. Yeah, and you know what? Better just pay the cat the the bill and be done with it, and then try to figure out the next day. And see, you know, if you have that two hundred dollars on you, and your buddy gets his card declined, Ooh. as much as you hate to do it, you can then cover him. You could do that with a card also, but see, that's an emergency situation, and um, having that, you know, is golden. All right, so there are any number of situations in which paying with credit card might not be an option. Do those guys that put chains on your tires as you go over Ooh. the summit, do they do they take your debit card? No, I don't think so. And having a single $20 bill in your pocket will not get you out of every tight corner. Like putting chains on. It costs an average of $221 per person each day traveling in the United States. So $200. <clears throat> is a nice dependable amount that should cover just about anything. So what denomination should you carry it in? Uh-huh, what? Uh, they say mostly in 20s. Okay. A couple of Benjamins might look impressive. Yeah. And be less physically cumbersome, but not gonna be ideal in every emergency scenario. Especially when you go into a store, it broke down and you need to get something and all you have is a hundred dollar bill and they just open the doors. It's places, like- Places are a little leery about taking hundred dollar bills anymore because there's that's what counterfeiters yeah. do. They make fake hundreds. That's why my career as a counterfeiter didn't work, Ronnie. Remember when you arrested me, I was counterfeiting once. Once, yeah. Uh, and it just- cost, It costs more to, to it make did. it. And there was a lot of overhead, <laughs> I have to say. <laughs> Uh, so, but if you need extra cash for something like, say, getting towed out of a ditch or yeah. getting a jump start from a good Samaritan in the middle right. of a d uh, desert, deserted road, slipping them a couple 20s for their trouble is a lot easier than asking if they can break a hundred. Have you ever made a quick trip to the grocery store to pick up one or two things and ended up walking out with your groceries for the week? It happens to everybody and that $200 in your pocket should be more than enough for everything that you need. So why pay in cash when you could way more easily use a card? In 2008, uh, a study was published in the Journal of Experimental Psychology. Researchers found that participants spend 21% more when using a credit card to purchase ingredients for a Thanksgiving dinner uh -huh. uh, than when paying in cash. So when we slap down a credit card, doesn't feel like you're really losing anything until you check your balance later on. But with cash, you're aware of it right now and every per with every purchase. So you're more careful to pick out only the things you really need at the prices you really want to spend. You should have at least $20 in $5 bills. You never know when you need to tip somebody, whether it's your barber, barista, or bellhop, uh, or some other profession that doesn't begin with B. Having a few wrinkled singles isn't going to help you. We live in 2018, people, not the early 20th century. According to Business Insider, standard tipping for everything from dry cleaners to hotel maids to parking valets is between $5 and $10. So having at least a few of these bills on hand will ensure you're always prepared. And you know what? Uh, let's throw in their tow truck drivers. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know when the last time you had to have a tow was, maybe your accident or something, but yep. uh, did you tip your tow, dri tow driver, tow truck driver? I did not because I was on my way to the hospital. Oh, so. that's no excuse really. <laughs> uh, but you know what, I, I get what they're, what they're saying about fives being pretty much the lowest tip, mm -hmm. but I'm not the kind of guy that can make it rain with $5 bills. I can make it rain with ones though, because yeah. I'm tipping my valet. Is that what you call her? <laughs> <laughs> so this says, please avoid $1 bills. There you go. They're freaking filthy. Yeah, they are. Uh, cash in general is pretty toxic, but dollar bills in particular can be nastier than you ever imagined. Researchers from Ohio analyzed seven, several dozen $1 bills at random and found 87% were infected with bacteria. Just think of anything a dollar bill is still used for in a modern world. Hmm, what could it be? Exotic dancers. Oh, that could be it. Yeah. Uh, hundreds of uh, you know handouts to homeless people. Mm -hmm. uh, that's about it. It's, uh, it's no surprise. Most dollar bills are very dirty. Yeah. You know, the kids today, 
You know how hip I am with the kids. Oh yeah. Oh, you're. I'm a hipster. Yeah. You bet. Uh, you know, I, and I'll tell you this: I went to a canine school in Nashville a couple years ago now, and we were it was talking about uh, detection dogs, and they have dogs that can detect. They they sniff money. But what they found, the dogs were actually keying on. Oh no. Feces. Almost, no, almost a hundred percent of oh, bills drugs have drugs on them. Uh, I knew it. Yeah. Yeah. Because people roll up a, a twenty or a hundred and they snort their cocaine uh, through it. But as soon as you put that bill next to another bill, uh -huh. it becomes contaminated. And then the next one and the next one and the next one. Wow. And so these dogs and they use them for uh interdiction they call it uh if you you can't just travel down the road with a hundred thousand dollars in your car seems like it would be nice but you can't do it right. and so Oops. they you know they'll pull a car over basically on a freeway that meets certain criteria you know for speeding or following too closely or whatever have the dog run around the car real quick oh it alerts on the money and then they ask him if they're carrying any money. Oh, no, we don't have any money. Well, you uh, said something that was key there that I kind of hit on when you were talking about reasons to pull over a vehicle before you said tailgating. And what was the other one? Following too close. Before that. Uh, speeding. Before that. Uh, For some reason. What's that criteria? <laughs> yeah, well, that's a that's a closely guarded secret. Ah, <laughs> okay, all right. Yeah, there are some criteria that you know are a little bit higher up on the scale of that looks suspicious. Okay, I'm so, trying to figure out what that is, and I guess you won't tell me here. Yeah, yeah, I'll tell you after the show. Okay, all right, yeah. fair enough. Yeah. All right, and then I'll just put it in the comments below. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that brings us to the conclusion of this episode of Men Are So Smart. Uh, thank you very much, Alan, for your email. We appreciate yeah, that a lot. Good question. Uh, our email addresses are going to pop up. Here we go. Mine is Lou at Men Are So Smart. That's mine too. Oh no, it's that. Not. This, that oh, that's not yours. <laughs> that would be convenient. Yes, though. it would. I'd get no. all the email, and you'd get none. <laughs> mine is Ronnie uh, at MenAreSoSmart.com. Okay, so thank you very much. Anytime you want to comment or uh, send us a, some kind of communique, you can do that at our email addresses. We love when it comes to both of us. I've said this before, because then you, what you get is like an unbiased, honest answer from each of us. And we have differing opinions. It's always. Things. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm so nice. <laughs> and Ronnie is not. I'm not always that nice. Not always that nice. No. But that's okay. I'm a realist. We're honest. <laughs> yes. That's what it is. Yeah. All right, so uh, please, if you haven't already done so, subscribe to our channel, and when you do, click the bell so that you might get notifications each time a new episode comes out. Yep. And um, if we haven't already said it to you, Merry Christmas. Yeah. Happy holidays, whatever applies to you. We say Merry Christmas. Um, that's where we stand on that one. Or Festivus for the rest of us. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. and um, ooh, baby. Cold it's outside. cold outside, isn't it? <laughs> we said it. There we go. <laughs> We're going to do a whole episode of that. We already did. <laughs> yeah. Boy, it was Channel 3 late to that fight. Oh, uh, I know. Wow. Yeah. All right, so uh, that'll do it. We'll see you on the next Men Are So Smart.